If Optimus Prime and Batman had a baby, it'd probably be this opening. The Jabava London is like a McDonald's ice cream machine that never breaks. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Now, to understand the main plans of this opening, I'm gonna be walking you through four games that I played uh, on my speedrun account. We're basically gonna be making uh, 1900 ELO opponents as vulnerable as a snowman inside the sauna, so let's dive right in, shall we? Alright everybody, we managed to get ourselves a game against the penguin. Penguins are pretty high rated these days, uh, sitting at uh, 1950 from uh, Canada. Uh, Alright, he plays d5, meaning that uh, we can actually play the Jabava London. The main condition to be able to play uh, Jabava London is our opponent to go for d5 in uh, the first two to three moves. Which pretty much they have to, uh, otherwise you would be able to set up a pretty juicy pawn center. So you're gonna be getting um, Jabava London in like 70-80% of your games and... Uh, Alright, he plays bishop to d6. Now, you have many ways uh, of playing this. Most people would go bishop g3, but uh, I don't recommend that since the bishop on g3 doesn't really do much if your opponent uh, doesn't take it. And I would do a, mo uh, a much more useful move, which is e3. Preparing, uh, developing this bishop and uh, defending. Also taking is, yeah, just kind of giving him opportunity to get another pawn closer to the center. So I'm not going to give him that. I'm just going to play e3. Let's see if he's going to bite or not. And uh, yeah, would have guessed that uh, penguins were pretty hungry. So he took and now we got ourselves into what I like to call the uh, uh, boa snake structure. Because uh, at this point, the game is going to like really slow down. We can forget about any tricks. We're just going to be going for positional play. And this is going to be very difficult for my opponent to deal with. He starts by uh, playing queen to d6, saying, uh, Hello, Alex Banzer, you're just uh, a big idiot. That one is pretty weak, you're not supposed to be doing it this way. Well, at the very least, you can always counter that uh, with a move g3, so that's not really an issue. Uh, I think I'm just gonna do queen d2. Though, just, uh, okay, developing the queen, and then knight f3, bishop d3, short castle. Um, this is how you always uh, play. You never castle long in the boa snake. Just don't. We castle uh, long only in the pawn storm while playing the Jupava London. Okay, he goes knight g6. Hearing this pawn yet again, he really doubles down on the argument. Well, right now then I'm just gonna play g3. I'm just gonna defend and notice that... Uh, I mean, yeah, the knight uh, booked a plane ticket from uh, America all the way to Europe. Just to realize that uh, g3 will completely shut him down. He got uh, stopped at the gate immediately. So that's just uh, resulting in a bit of a... Time loss for him while also misplacing the knight. Well, we would have uh, kind of played g3 anyways. It's a nice move to have in this structure. Goes knight c6. I'm gonna go bishop d3. I'm not like a huge fan of allowing knight b4, but um, also I don't think we have to invest a 10 point going a3. It's really, it's not that big of a deal. Like if he goes for it, we can give him the bishop. Fine. It's taking him a lot of time uh, to move the knight and actually capture it. Yeah, probably he should. It's like lesser evil for him. But yeah. He goes for the uh, other idea. Into before. So the thing is, the way he is playing it right now, just going for this pseudo active moves. Normally, this should uh, really backfire. Okay. He wants to... Uh, attack this pawn, he wants to attack that as well. Taking on d4 is not a real threat because we have a little surprise at the end of the variation. And I'm wondering if we can make a3 work, queen b2, and then short castle. He's forced to play queen b6. I have rook fb1, he has only moved queen a5, but then I have rook b5. And it looks like the queen is getting in trouble. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. So this is pretty much uh, one of those uh, classical examples where 
you shouldn't be going uh, cave exploring uh, with your queen. So I'm just gonna castle. Now I'm literally threatening to trap it. So he has to play queen b6, only move to not resign. And yeah, my calculation was I saw this, only move queen a5. And then I saw rook b5 and uh, only move queen to a6. So this is the position I had in my head. And then I realized that, uh, okay, at the very least, there will be uh, queen a6, rook takes d5. So winning back the pawn while still uh, keeping direct contact with his queen. Maybe there's something even better. Okay, now time to think for a little bit. You can try to also pause the video. Because I think I have just spotted even a juicier idea rather than taking. So this was the like safety first type of move, but uh, perhaps you can find even a better sequence. Come on, I'm watching you. You can do this. You're in game facing a 1950 uh, penguin. That would be pretty embarrassing to lose to. So you really want to find this winning move. And... The point is to go ahead and uh, keep pressuring the queen. So for that, I'm going to do rook c5. This is very easy to calculate because he has only moves. Yeah, only move queen b6. Squares are taken. Uh, b5 uh, really isn't a choice because my bishop can capture and then he's losing a piece. And okay, what do we do, queen b6? Uh, do we just take the draw? Well... You have simple move, rook b1, winning it for the rook, but I was wondering, can we go knight a4 and actually just win it for the knight? Yeah, I think I kind of like that even better. Oh, also want to watch out for like knight a4 to not give him knight d4 trick. Ah, see? Okay, this is actually important. So maybe if I go rook b1, wow, he has stunning resource, he would have had knight d4. That one I didn't see. So knight a4, actually, I think it's only winning move. Uh, did he have knight d4? No, he didn't. Yeah. He never had that, uh, I think. So I think this is only winning move. Rook b1, I genuinely believe knight takes d4. If I take, then I'm just lost. Queen c5. So this has to be only winning move. We'll have to check it after the game. Wow. Uh, 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 I'm out of words. <laughs> From such a bad position, it's easy to lose awareness and uh, stop uh, taking into account the enemy counterplay. But I think we really dodged the bullet in that position. So, okay, now just gonna collect my free queen. Uh, okay, uh, what is material count? Uh, we have queen for rook and pawn. Uh, obviously amazing. It's like uh, we just traded our little Toyota for a Lamborghini. Maybe for some people that would still <laughs> would prefer the Toyota, but yeah, long story short, uh, we really uh, made a positive trade and should be uh, winning this game. I'm just going to try to focus on the king side here. Maybe king g2, rook h1. Yeah, he plays f5, so f5 stops the diagonal, but uh, the main drawback of it is that, uh, okay... What is the main drawback? What do you think is the main drawback with f5? Take this as a positional awareness exercise. Why is f5 not a good move? What's the drawback? The point is that uh, it creates a backward pawn on e6. So notice that uh, e6 cannot be uh, protected by any of its own pawns. I mean, of the black pawns. And uh, we have open file on it. Meaning that it's a very obvious target that most likely will drop. And I'm just looking for ways to open up the game now to get the queen to infiltrate. C4 was genuinely the only pawn break available, so it's pretty self-explanatory. And once he takes, I could do it this way. I could also say, hmm, what if I dig with a queen? You've got two pieces on the same, uh, on the same thingy. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for like simple, just take with a bishop, now we pin the, the backward pawn, yeah, he goes back and now I can either keep piling up pressure with a move like knight g5, but 
e1 d5 maybe using some tricks okay maybe b5 now should be best uh, defensive attempt because if he takes the point was that i get to yeah just deliver a beautiful fork and has to do b5 i would imagine trying to mess up with a bishop but we can at the very least uh, step back okay bishop b7 interesting attempt that uh, obviously i didn't see but how do you think we can solve the uh, issue on the long diagonal please feel free to pause the video and find the, the best move for white because yeah you should try to get into this habit of making your ideal move work first before changing the plan because it's very easy to get in defensive mode in this way you're gonna be uh, missing uh, a lot of golden opportunities so no i can just take because i have this discovery he can block with the knight but then i promote i'm winning the rook I has to block with knight f8 and okay now time to think again for a bit there is obviously trade, but the knight is pinned, so I may want to delay it for a bit since the knight is not running anywhere. I'm going to try to bring the knight, like really the knight is the least active piece in the possession. So uh, yeah, what good to have uh, extra material if you're not using it? That's uh, yeah, a common mistake. Bishop e4, so he's attacking uh, my queen. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. What do we play? So bishop d3, move that's forcing uh, bishop trade, let's say. But queen b3 or a2 would be on top of my list here. Yeah, I think queen a2 is simplest, so that on b5, okay. <laughs> Maybe queen a2 looks a bit silly now that I look at it. I wanted to give me square on b3 if I need to, but obviously I have bishop d5 as well. Queen a5, queen a2 now just looks a little bit goofy, but... Yeah, as long as you keep control over the position, any move uh, should be completely winning. Oh, he goes c5. He's really inviting me into his house. I'm gonna say, uh, okay, thank you, sir. You have a very nice house. I'd like to go to e6 and then pick up the uh, pinned knight. Maybe that's not like best uh, way to treat... Uh, your guests or hosts, let's say, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I even got distracted in the <laughs> in my nonsense, and I forgot to take on f8. I just went for the pin. My bad, but anything wins with mate soon. Point is this, and rook f8. Okay, taking. Now gonna gonna show him uh, our neighbor gonna introduce him to Mr. Zugzwang and uh, yeah okay I mean you can kind of tell it from the name <laughs> Mr. Zugzwang sounds a little bit grumpy it's a sign that my opponent now has no moves and he's gonna lose uh, by force and he plays uh, 97 I can check King h6 uh, what is the final touch I can check king g7, I can check king f8. Ah, where is my mate? Okay, <laughs> funny situation, I don't see my mate. Can I just attack the knight though? Uh, yeah. That should do. Hope he plays knight f8. And we can show uh, a nice little idea, although on knight of 8, yeah, everything wins. Everything wins. I'm also threatening to, like, play rook e7. Now that becomes a thing. And the queen is perfectly placed. And okay, knight of 8. So, we have simple move, rook e7, and then pick up the rook. But even nicer, you want to get used to this... Uh, idea where black pieces are being overloaded because there is rook takes on f8 i think so he cannot take with the rook he can only take with the king but then the rook remains undefended and we get to break through bang 
Okay, and now just a little pattern mate, checkmate in two. Queen f7, queen d7, and uh, finally, well, this was, you know, <laughs> a pretty fighting penguin. So we're gonna we're gonna give him that. He fought pretty well, and uh, all in all, I'd say pretty clean game. Really, we didn't have to find uh, much afterwards. But uh, let's actually check, because I'm super curious about that idea early on. I genuinely believe that knight a4 was the only winning move. Okay, so got 92, and here, yeah, look, knight a4, only winning move. So if you thought rook b1 is the answer, <laughs> congratulations, you have just gotten yourself a completely lost position after knight takes on d4 resource. <laughs> now, to be brutally honest with you, there is 99% uh, chance that your opponent uh, wouldn't have spotted that and you would have grabbed the queen anyways. But uh, hey, the fact that uh, we managed to find the uh, knight takes on d4 in time, it's pretty good. But Alex Banzea, como debería más jugar contra Pirk? Oh, I'm really glad you asked, little Spanish VR. Now, to simplify this, when we go uh, knight c3, the threat is to expand in the center with e4. That is why most of the times uh, people play d5. But uh, in case they don't and they just play for the fianchero, uh, I recommend you grab the center. And then you want to remember, all right, we just want to do bishop e3, queen d2, long castle, play bishop h6. This is going to be the uh, topic of the next game. So uh, why don't we dive right in? If e5, you just push. If c5, um, pushing works. Taking also works. Um, yeah, expecting also move like c6, b5. Probably with this uh, sort of typical uh, Pirk counterplay is that uh, he's just very slow and it's pretty easy to dodge. So, um, yeah, our plan is much more straightforward. We just want to do h4, h5. Trade bishops, open up the file, bring the queen. The only thing that keeps his position together is the f6 knight covering h7. So last step of the plan is to get rid of that knight. Usually it happens with a move like e5. And then the knight moves and you win on h7. Simply thanks to the open h file. It's pretty much uh, the kryptonite uh, of the peak, if you want to call it that way. Um... So for this reason, they are not supposed to go for these uh, short castle lines anymore if they want to survive. And okay, we have c5. Uh, I could think for a little bit in this position. One option is to go dc, saying that after the knight takes c5, which is attacking the pawn, we can simply play f3. And the main argument is that in these kind of Sicilian positions that we just transposed to, the knight is not really meant to be on c5. The knight usually stays on c6. Because the knight on c5, it's kind of restricted by my f3, e4, block of pawns. That's an option. The only other thing is uh, whether I can play d5. And as I'm saying it, I realized there's another pretty interesting idea. Which I just, uh, yeah, remembered. That I, I've seen a game in the past by Richard Rapport. So, there's a little bit of a thingy going on the d file, and uh, you can actually start with takes and then e5 in this position. The point is, you're luring the king on g7, and then e5 is threatening to take with check. So you can meet cd with ef6 intermezzo. So that is going to be the best move. Normally, if he would have gone slower, I try to delay the take. I don't want to, like, take on g7 first, and then play h4 because that gives him h5 option. So for that reason, on c6, I just push the pawn first, then take, then trade bishops. Hopefully that's not confusing. When c5 and I'm going to go for the take. Uh, sorry if there's any like uh, background uh, noise. My uh, air conditioner was uh, going pretty wild <laughs> over there. He's getting excited for the uh, Pirk game. And yeah, I'm going to do e5. 
I remember uh, seeing a Richard Rapport game as white. Well. He just won in like 20 moves against the Grandmaster. This is already, I think, according to the computer, close to like a plus one advantage. So e5, yeah. The problem is that d e d e. My opponent does not have knight takes, since uh, yeah, we can just take one d8 twice, and we would be winning the exchange. Uh, actually, let me rephrase that. We would be winning a clean rook. So even better. Yeah, he has to go passive, and now there is this threat of him taking, but we can just go uh, pawn grab, I think. I mean, yeah, I'm just an idiot that I cannot really utilize the English language. This is not a pawn grab, it is just... Um, we're gonna go for the pawn takes. And then knight f3, h4, h5. Just simple plan, we have a symmetrical position where uh, my opponent will have a bit of a weak pawn, and uh okay he it turns out we might actually get a quick win so he tried to avoid getting the uh backward pawn on the d file but he can try to pause the video and think about uh what is potentially the drawback behind the knight a capture because there's something pretty concrete and the idea is that we can go dc5 and he cannot recapture my opponent probably thought he can recapture, but then I have a little, uh, yeah, double attack. So he just has to move the knight away, like knight f5, but uh, notice that it's going to be really impossible for him to complete development. So it's not only that we are having the extra pawn, but he also has no moves, which, uh, yeah, I'd say counts even more. Knight f5, I'm thinking to maybe go aggressive on him with a move like g4, target the knight, probably force him back onto h6. Alright, so he just goes uh, back. Also, h4 move, just very simple. Notice that he's not threatening to take. So, I'm just gonna go for the attack. What's actually surprising while uh, you're playing this attack against the Pirk is that uh, you don't have to really uh, develop the kingside pieces if you don't have obviously good squares for them. So, these pieces can just stay there for a while. You can just mate on the h file without having to develop them. Uh, simply because uh, most of the times you don't have good squares, so you don't want to develop pieces just for the sake of, you know, developing. You want to be impactful when you do it. So he takes, now we're going to get to sh uh, highlight the uh, typical procedure. So we sacrifice the pawn to open up the file. Now, I'm not going to take because I don't have a clear follow-up, but I'm going to play simple move g4 to get rid of the knight. Also bishop e2, potential alternative, but g4 more straightforward. The knight has to go back to f6, where it came from. And then we're going to bring in the queen. And then we'll have to think. All right? I don't know uh, everything uh, from home. Wish I did, but chess is not that simple. So this part is pretty much quite automatic, what we're doing right now. Sacrifice the pawn, get rid of the knight, bring the queen. Then we just have to, yeah... Do the part that uh, I uh, I struggle with the most, which is uh, we need to use our brain. So, yeah, opponent thinking he doesn't really have an alternative. Like that is genuinely the only square for the knight. Okay, knight back. Yeah, just going in and uh, then it's going to be a critical moment. So we need to get rid of this guy. Now, first instinct is g5. You think, oh, we just won the game. No, you have to wake up Bozo because you can just go back. You go g5, you give him knight h5. Surely, I mean, probably you're winning with like the simple bishop e2 and bishop takes. But uh, I'm looking also for like a deflection. So like knight e4 kind of move. If he takes, pick up the pawn with mate. Also knight e4, it's nice that he's pinned along the d file. So on knight e4, he could try a move like, let's say, queen c7. So that on knight takes, he can take back with the knight. But please feel free to pause the video and try to find the uh, winning continuation after knight e4, queen c7. That is actually a very juicy idea. So I'm going to give you the first move, a little bit of help. But then you'll have to find it, okay? What if this was your game? I'm not going to be on your shoulder telling you that you have a winning move. Pretty sure that would be cheating. So, 
Queen C7, you're in game. You're facing a 1950 rated opponent from Germany. What do you do? How do you break through? I'm also making this uh, 2x more challenging while <laughs> making annoying comments. So if you find it, even better. So as I said, issue is that after knight takes, he takes back with a knight. So very simple. Let's make sure he doesn't get rid of that knight. He can't take this way. That loses the pawn. If he takes this way, I take with check. Uh, removing the defender of the h7 one. That is really like the biggest theme. All we want to do is uh, remove the defender. These are the most uh, common the standard procedures while attacking. You either remove the defender or bring another attacker. So, yeah. Okay, he tries a little <laughs> queen check to deflect me. I have to uh, take the free queen. What can I say? I like free queens. Expecting maybe bishop take. And then, okay, I mean, I'm just gonna keep it very simple. Take on f6, infiltrate. Yeah. Also could do bishop c4. Notice that we still haven't like really touched those pieces. It's like move 20. I'm telling you, this is literally how it plays out. You don't have to rush with these pieces. But now, okay, I want to mate. So after king f8, I don't see a move. Checking uh, lets him run away. So once I capture, which he cannot stop, I want to proceed in attacking, uh, yeah, f7. So I can start bishop c4 right away, or I can take, probably, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to do it here. This is the plan. He has one check, but I have only move. King d2. Pretty sure you could have spotted that one. And yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> if you guys think it's uh, you need to do some rocket science to win against uh, players that are roughly 2000. I don't know. This doesn't really feel that difficult. To be honest, the biggest uh, obstacle of this game was uh, even I could have forgotten about it that on C5, I had to remember that old uh, Richard Rapport game where he took and he went E5. I knew there is something fishy going on with this C5. So I just thought about it for a little bit, but um, even if you didn't remember it, it, it doesn't really matter. There have many ways to be better. So he resigned. Okay. Showing the respect. Um, honestly... To me, this feels like a very accurate game because all the moves were super straightforward, but let's see. Yeah, okay, got 97.6. So everything was a perfect move. Uh, okay, it really helped that uh, I remember to go for this uh, take and then uh, e5, 98, and then he made this blunder. In the rapport game... The guy took with the pawn, and then I think he went for h4 or knight f3, something like that. And Rapport won in like less than 20 moves in a classical game. But after this, yeah, extra pawn, go for the attack. And then very nice move. Rook takes d7, sacrifice the rook. So, yeah, that was pretty much checkmate. Hope you guys... Uh, Found this uh, little uh, perk idea quite uh, insightful. And uh, with that being said, why don't we move uh, on to the following game? Oh, hello there. Gonna be going uh, for another job of London as uh, you wish. Okay, you don't have to ask me twice. I'm gonna do it, okay? Stop screaming at me. I'm gonna do it and we're gonna be doing it against a 1950 opponent from the UK. That actually tries to play the Dutch against us. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Now, what you need to remember about the Dutch is that, uh, okay, you no longer play Jobava London. So, to play Jobava London, you need your opponent to play the d5 move within the first two, three moves. He goes f5, it's a sign he's gonna do none of that. So, you just have to play the Dutch opening. And I recommend you just to do normal London setup. 
Knight F3, E3, Bishop E2, Short Castle. And the main reason why we uh, don't play Jobava is that in the Dutch, Black tries to attack on the king side. So in order to compensate, we need to be able to push the queen side pawns. Therefore, we want to go for the c4 move, which is not, a, is not a thing basically with a knight on c3. You cannot do that anymore. So first, important to get castle. Many people get confused and go c4. And that could potentially allow some nasty check with knight e4. So no, you just do this. No need to ever be afraid of knight h5. We actually completely ignore that. And then we play c4, knight c3. Yeah, if knight h5, I let him take. We're going to have a boa snake structure. And he plays d5. Wow. That's uh, strange, <laughs> I would say, because normally this is the so-called classical Dutch setup. He could also play a Dutch where the bishop fianqueros uh, or a stonewall. But he combines uh, like stonewall structure with uh, bishop on b7. Bit unexpected. Uh, well, what can I say? I have many moves. Rook c1, a typical idea since uh, it's very likely that in the future we're going to take and uh, the rook is going to be useful over there. And he plays c6, so he blunts the bishop but he keeps a solid position. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Alex Banzea, this guy is playing a total uh, cloud opening. Why is this a video? Well... It looks very shady, all right, but it's actually not super easy to break. So we just need to uh, be comfortable uh, playing with the extra space. So we're going to start with a3 and we're going to let him blunder with knight d7 because that's what he's going to do. Uh, now you can pause the video and find the refutation of knight bd7. Now, having he not blundered, Say he would have done anything else, my plan was to go b4, queen b3, maybe rook fd1, and just try to keep pushing on the queen side, uh, like I promised in the beginning. But knight d7, I hope you found the refutation by now. Uh, okay. When you have such an early refutation, it has to happen somewhere that our opponent doesn't really have control over. The only undefended uh, pawn and square in his camp is e6. It has to be something with that. So the move, uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Knight g5, we're going to be winning a pawn. And then uh, that knight is really going to be like a thorn, uh, a thorn, a thorn. Two thorns. It's going to be like two thorns in black position. One thorn wouldn't be annoying enough. But a knight on e6, uh, yeah, it's like... Uh, we plant a seed and all of a sudden uh, it starts growing into a tree. So the knight on e6 is going to be super unpleasant for him. And yeah, he, he doesn't know what to do. He goes, uh, okay, no, don't take my pawn. Just uh, I don't want to live with such knight. Uh, I give you my rook. I mean, surely we can take it, but I'm going to say no. I want my very annoying knight. What are you going to do about it? Okay. If queen e8, I got a little trick hidden in the pocket because there's going to be another fork. And queen c8 really feels dangerous because you're placing yourself uh, on the square with the rook. So as I said in the beginning, uh, we can play rook c1 because at some point it's very likely that this move is going to be useful and the rook is going to activate. So yeah, it's no magic, just applying uh, simple fundamentals and um, yeah, we're completely cooking a 1950 rated opponent. Um, yeah, if you guys feel like <laughs> this is uh, difficult, uh, I mean, it may seem difficult if you're not playing by the rules, but yeah, if it looks like I'm doing anything crazy to you right now, if this is any kind of like genius play, I think you can easily recreate this. So uh, yeah, okay, next step of the game is just to try not to blunder and keep control over the position because this is not over yet. That would be another typical mistake to like, uh, okay, relax yourself too much. So, uh, yeah, we want to go for trades. So knight f8, I see trade, I go for it. We want to open up the position, go for trades, keep control. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, he takes to the queen. 
Now, I'm gonna go for trades and uh, then I'm gonna have to ask you to pause the video again and find even a more winning move. Then, you know, the position is completely winning already. You can just do this and be winning. But now, even better, you can go for the exchange. So I didn't take the rook immediately, but I might do it now. And he resigns. Okay, I mean, uh, yeah, just... I'm telling you, play normal London on the Dutch. Uh, and, okay, I'm a London guy in general, right? You'd think that, oh, this guy is just a London patser. He does it against anything else. I don't want to do it like that. I don't want to transition. Well, hear me out. Against the Dutch, really, the London system is one of the best setups that you can genuinely play. Because... Uh, the Dutch works best when uh, the dark square bishop is trapped inside the pawn chain. So you can picture those like uh, stonewall setups. They get bishop d6, they get some attack. But when you have bishop outside the pawn chain, um, yeah, it's really going to be kind of a passive Dutch, let's say. They're not really going to get the usual activity. So going to pop in a game uh, review real quick and uh, yeah. I think with that being said, uh, we can just move on to the following game. Hey, amigo, look who made it this far into the video. You're pretty bored, huh? Uh, anyways, uh, I really saved the, the best part for last because uh, in the beginning, uh, you may remember, hopefully, that uh, we went over the fianchero. The fianchero where uh, we control the center. And the key idea was to play this uh, queen d2, bishop h6. Now, in the last game, we're going to be going over uh, how to play against the fianchero when black stepped uh, into the center. So notice that uh, we can no longer play uh, queen d2, bishop h6 anymore due to uh, the pawn on e3. This is going to be the topic of the next game. Plus, I'm also going to give you my blueprint on how to always convert uh, extra pawns. So, uh, yeah, let's dive right into the game. Now, my opponent goes ahead and the Fianchiros. He plays g6, bishop g7 next. Now, the template stuff would be bishop d3, knight f3, castle. However... Because he goes for the fianchero, that means our bishop on d3 is going to be staring into a block of granite. So it's not going to be uh, the most active bishop ever, to say the least. So for that reason, we need to make a small adjustment. So when you see g6, we're going to be using uh, that pawn as a hook. So I'm going to start with h4. Now expecting either h5 or bishop g7, right? Now I'm going to do the move bishop to e2. It's also interesting to push and then sacrifice the rook for the knight. But I'm going to do it uh, the simple way. Rather than to just uh, play h5 without really sacrificing anything. Uh, and he blocks. Yeah, he kind of has to because castling would let us push and then take. Uh, ge getting a great attack thanks to the open file. He blocks. All right, now that he blocked, next step. Mm, okay, what to do? Weak square on e5. So you go knight f3, knight e5. That's the first step. And then uh, we look for ways to pretty much long castle. Now that you play h4, normally uh, we're going to try to long castle. Normally, yeah, they do some developing moves. I'm going to continue, knight e5. Uh, already, I want to let you know that bishop f5 is uh, pretty much what uh, everybody there cat included would play. I think even I made this mistake in the past as black. Because you just try to get developed and, uh, okay, I mean, <laughs> you play the black pieces, the guy does a weird opening. How bad can it go? You're telling yourself. But the problem with bishop f5 is that they don't understand uh, the bigger picture. Since, uh, okay... Black has this hook on h5 that we're going to use, and the point is to play f3, g4, uh, once we finish long castle. So, because f3, g4 is a plan anyways, putting your bishop on f5 is only going to speed up that initiative, because it's going to come with a tempo. But uh, he is trying to prove me wrong. 
because he deviated and played knight e4. So knight e4 stops my natural move. I would have continued with uh, queen to d2, long castle, and then f3, g4. And he's also threatening to play the move uh, knight takes on c3, giving me double pawns. So I'm going to go ahead and take and expecting bishop takes. Taking with a pawn would be uh, already a strategic mistake. He's going to get uh, double pawns literally for no reason. Yeah, you take with a pawn only if you have to. Otherwise, you normally prefer to keep uh, a healthy pawn structure. Takes this way, attacking g2. Uh, I'm just going to play f3, solving that issue, gaining a tempo. And I already mentioned that uh, it is part of our uh, main plan. And uh, he doesn't really have uh, much to do other than going back. And we're going to go queen d2. We're going to play uh, yeah, just our standard moves. And once uh, castling happens, looking for g4. Now, I think it would be uh, a pretty big mistake for my opponent to rush with uh, castling. Because you're pretty much just uh, entering the jungle. You're placing yourself uh, on, a, on a really vulnerable uh, path. It's like, uh, yeah, you're just uh, <laughs> crossing the street while uh, trusting a little bit too much the uh, Romanian drivers. So, uh, yeah, I'm always extra cautious with that. So probably you don't want to, you don't want to short castle. You want to do like knight d7 and delay it. Now, he starts with f6, which is a super double-edged move. I don't really have much of a choice. The only square for the knight is d3. Uh, so I'm just going to go there. But with f6, you're not only uh, blunting the bishop on g7, also g6 perhaps uh, could become a bit of a target in the future. Now g6 uh, is a pawn that's not protected by the pawn anymore. So uh, that could be something to work with. Uh, and yeah, I mean, what can I say? He really did it himself. He gave me bishop pair uh, for free. I mean, yeah, it's what a lucky day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it just like a coupon to your favorite uh, pizza restaurant. Okay, you just played f5. Okay, this isn't really. A super stupid strategy on his end. He just gave up the light square bishop and now he's placing pawns on the opposite uh, color of his bishop. So this bishop is actually pretty happy. Uh, credits to him for that idea. Uh, the problem for it uh, is that it's uh, completely lost. Why is this completely lost? Well, uh, we have obvious targets to play for. So we're going to be able to either push e4. Yeah, if we feel central. But perhaps easiest uh, to go g4. Because e3 is a pretty nice uh, uh, pawn to have uh, defending d4. Securing a very firm uh, grip uh, over, the, uh, over the center. So I'd rather not uh, make the situation messy over there. Since uh, we, can, we can already go for a risk-free push on the, on the king side. So yeah, g4. You can sacrifice if you feel like you need extra protection. Go rook g1 and then uh, do this move. I'm just going to do it uh, like this, rook g1, g4. I could have done it right away, but I think it's a good habit to get yourself into while playing against the Grunfeld. And yeah, I mean, I'm looking to go g4, open up the file and perhaps either infiltrate using the g5 square. Or I, uh, I might as well uh, look for a cheeky uh, uh, queen. The queen is going to become a swinger. It's going to go to g2, swinging the queen over the uh, king side. Uh, ready to take and then play queen g2. That's going to be creating a multi threat That's going to be pretty juicy. Uh, also, uh, may I just assure, uh, not assure, but remind you that after pawn takes pawn takes and then rook g4 he's got himself a little bit of a permanent target on g6 which uh, was created when he played the f6 in the first place so uh, remember i told you a little bit uh, about that maybe i'm not like the stupidest guy on earth only the second
So, uh, okay, he plays e6. Now, I'm going to give him that he's doing the right thing. He tries to keep the position closed. Nevertheless, uh, still probably taking. So, uh, yeah, it's just a matter of choosing whether uh, you want to... You want to give him option to take uh, with the e-pawn or you want to give him option to take with the rook. Also, just so you guys uh, keep this in mind, to me it feels a bit slow right here, but it could be an interesting concept when you have extra space to uh, try to use it in order to dominate the file. So not to take and then play like rook g3, rook g1, but to do it first, yeah, like get all the pieces and only then take... You could do it uh, in that order as well to kind of deny him some uh, defensive options. That's also uh, something to keep in mind, but uh, it just feels too tasty to open it right away. Honestly, even Queen G2. Oh, oh my god, Queen G2 may actually be brilliant. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it, so... Uh, I mean, am I... Yeah, no, Queen G2 just takes advantage of the concept that I just highlighted. We're going to do Queen G2 right away. And what's the problem with uh, Queen to F6? Pause the video. And try to find the winning move. Because Queen F6 is the only sensible way to uh, try and protect the G6 square. It's actually very likely that he's going to play Queen F6, blundering uh, a crazy idea. Crazy simple. Because uh, on Queen F6... Ba -ba 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 the winning move. Bishop g5. <laughs> and the queen is trapped. So, yeah, that would not be a very smart chess move. And, uh, okay, he plays knight of 8. This is about uh, to get uh, pretty graphic. So, uh, if you guys, uh, yeah, are watching together with uh, your girlfriend or wife... Make sure to close her eyes or something, because, uh, yeah, we are about to do something pretty wild in the king side. So, we start with taking. He has only one move, taking with a pawn, since that is going to drop the bishop. And then uh, I'm going to politely ask you again to pause the video and find uh, the last nail in the coffin. How do we break through? Because it looks like, okay, black is, you know, playing pretty clever, not blundering, keeping everything together. But there is a lot of things going on. So bishop takes an f5, just simple one mover. It's literally a one mover. He cannot uh, capture the bishop. We're exploiting uh, the fact that the pawn is pinned. And okay, he plays queen f6 now. So, first instinct, you look bishop g5, can I trap the queen again? The answer should immediately be no, because of queen f5, so... Uh, what do we do? There are uh, many ways to continue, but I would say in general the biggest uh, mistake that you could possibly make in such a situation is that uh, you start playing a little bit too greedy. Uh, no. Okay, we got a pawn, we just go back. Uh, I realized that, uh, yeah, for quite uh, a lot of players, uh, especially newer players, you think that, uh, okay, you want a pawn, you want to keep the initiative going. Like in boxing, you deliver a punch, then you want to look for the knockout. No, in chess, it's kind of the opposite. You you should really, like, slow down. Now, for instance, I we just want a pawn. I could go ahead and trade queens, get him slow, play into the endgame. Uh I'd probably still look for a way to checkmate, though. Because his king is really exposed. We have the open file. And uh, I think we have another, like, great move to apply simple fundamentals and really facilitate the win. So pause the video and this time think about a positional move. Not something that, uh, you know, it's anything interesting. So I think rook h3 is very clever. Preparing to play rook g3, getting the triple stack onto the backward pawn. So, please notice, all that I see in this position is backward pawn on g6. Why is that a backward pawn? It cannot be defended by any other 
of its uh, own pawns. So yeah, he wants to take now, take twice. Um, I can play bishop g5, but that would be kind of closing the file. I could trade. I don't want to do bishop e5 because then uh, he takes on e3. So yeah, just going to keep it simple. And now this is a threat. I'm going to go f4, further fixing the pawn, uh, opening up rook's path to defend. And uh, also maybe, just maybe, preparing some uh, f5 ideas to really try and expose that king. Yeah, so next up, either rook f3, f5, or rook g3, f5 should be the winning combo. It's just a matter of uh, whether... <laughs> Are we gonna be in time with only 30 seconds left and no increment? Stay tuned. I guess we're about to find out pretty soon. Yeah, I think even f5, very next move is fine. Because after pawn takes, I can just take with a bishop. And if queen takes, I can play rook f3. Win the queen for many pieces, but yeah. If they say these days that uh, <laughs> not even a million dollars feels like a million dollars, well, at least in chess, uh, a queen still feels like a queen. The inflation didn't get to the chess part uh, that aggressively yet, at least. Okay, so he plays there. Uh, I'm just going to do rook f3. I'm not going to like... Go for anything uh, complicated. Yes, I'm giving him h4, but f5 should be, uh, yeah, wide opening the king should be leading to a quick mate. So I'm going to push it. If takes, I think bishop takes is the easiest with discovery. Yeah, so if the rook leaves, then uh, we say hello to this uh, beautiful queen. If the rook stays there, uh, we'll just take it. We like to take free rooks. Probably for him, most stubborn defense is to sacrifice the queen and get plenty of pieces for it. Best play for white might not even be to grab the queen, but I don't have enough time to like really think about anything at this point. So I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm going to go in. Pray for me. <laughs> I don't really know what's happening to my body right now, but... Yeah, this is... Should be completely winning. I don't really see the refutation on rookie 3 immediately on top of my head. I can't find, but probably I'll just take and go king b1. My rook is protected. Hmm... Oh man, I feel like this is a this is a very nice game, and I might actually start crying if we get flagged. Wait, what is that move? That's the worst move on the chessboard. I will just defend, reinforcing uh, the pin. Cannot go queen e three. I take with the rook. That's nonsense. Okay, I'm going to play this move regardless, and uh, we're going to play the end game. Why, right, kids? Fasten your seatbelt. I'm going to have to do a little bit of pre-moving, but uh, I am just transitioning to a king and pawn end game with an extra pawn that's always completely winning. So, yeah, we're going to start by creating a passed pawn. Never mind, just kidding. We're going to take this side and take his other pawn. We're going to ignore whatever he's trying to do on that side. I'm going to take on c5 though. Take this pawn, get a queen. My queen is going to be just in time. Trust me, I've been here a thousand times before. That's why I have no life. I'm going to bring the king after. The queen covers promotion square. That's nice about side pawns. They uh, really cancel each other out nicely. What am I doing? Am I just having a brain fart? Why am I letting his king escape? Yeah, we'll never know. <laughs> I shouldn't stop pre-moving. Just have to catch the dra damn train, CJ. Okay, we got it. Ooh. 
that uh, yeah, it looked like the I had it all under control, but I I, I really didn't. Thanks everybody for making it this far into the video. And uh, before I let you go, I've got uh, two announcements. So, uh, first one of them, uh, if you're interested, I've been working on a Jubava London course for uh, about uh, almost two years by now, and it's going to be ready in the next couple of months. So, uh, if you want to get notified, you can subscribe to my uh, newsletter, alexbanza.com. Uh, it won't ask for your credit cards or anything like that. Uh, you'll just get a notification. And uh, second of all, in case uh, you've been waiting uh, to get my uh, Karo Khan course from Chessable, it is now currently on a sale for the next uh, five days. So uh, yeah, you can get access to about 1000 hours of my work for uh, yeah only 20 bucks. So it's not the worst uh, deal ever. Again, thanks everybody for uh, watching uh, this part of the video and... Uh, I'll see you around the channel. Have a good one.